Welcome, everybody. I'm Selena Resvani, and you're joining Women and Work Culture. We are all about those positive habits and practices for boosting women's leadership. And on the other side, helping companies really make those bold bets on their female talent. I am so excited to be here today with my dear friend and networking goddess, <laughs> Kelly Howie. Welcome, Kelly. It is so good to see you and uh, very appropriate that we met because of networking and because of a women's global networking group. So all of like, there we go, says it all. I know. It's like the ultimate uh, club sandwich of, <laughs> you know, perfect serendipity. But it's so true. You know, one of the things I love about you, Kelly, and your path is like, you really didn't order you know, the turkey on white bread career. And, and so let me tell people a little bit about your path as we do that. Uh, a big welcome, though, to our community. We're so excited to have you today. And I see Casey joining us from NYC and Emily also from NYC, Long Island, actually. Uh, Anissa from Tampa Bay, Philly suburbs in the house. Welcome to all of you. Um, so let me tell you about Kelly. Kelly Hoey is a networking expert, and she's author of Build Your Dream Network, Forging Powerful Relationships in a Hyper-Connected World. She offers really kind of modern takes on how to do this thing called networking. I really love it. And one of my favorite things she does is a podcast called Build Your Dream Network. Uh, I recently gave it five stars because it really is that good. It's that good and it's bite-sized if you're somebody who's busy. In it, Kelly gives really fresh tips uh, that are human. Uh, they are not like old school schmoozy kind of network tips. And on a personal note, I just wanna say, Kelly, you know, mention this. Um, Kelly gave me one of my first speaking breaks about 10 years ago, if you can believe that. And it was a big milestone for me in my confidence. Um, you said yes to me as a keynoter for a pretty large event, and it meant the world to me. And I love you for that. And I'll never forget it. Oh. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome. Yeah. So I want to dive right in and, and I want to invite our community to Jennifer. Hello from St. Pete. Um, a ask your questions of Kelly. What do you want to know about networking? Welcome, Valerine from uh, DFW. We're always so happy to see you. So why networking, Kelly? What like fired you up about this particular super skill? You know what? Listening to my network. Sometimes, you know, your network sees more in you than you see in yourself. And you can be like, you know, everyone's asked like, what's your superpower? And I would never have said, oh, I'm a networker, right? My <laughs> network told me that because the first time someone said to me, you need to tell people what you do. I basically told him he was an idiot. And this was a former <laughs> boss of mine. <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> it's back in like 2006. And then in 2016 to that, yeah, I had to reach out to Tim uh, and sort of say, oops, you were right. Mm. Uh, and so listen to your network, listen to your network. But my views on networking all began when I had a very traditional career. I started my life as an attorney. And a lot of the lessons that I bring to networking are from that time period. So when you said I have this different take on networking, it's because I very much bring this, all right, here's the tools at hand the time at hand and what needs to be done. Like not outside the box thinking, get inside the box, don't make excuses, use what you have. How do you make better human connections? 
I love that. I love that your your network was kind of echoing that message to you. The question I'd ask all of you joining today is what do people recognize you out loud for as a pattern? You know, what do you hear from your network that they're like, wow, your gift is really this, or you consistently do this well, you know, be listening for that. So you get a sense of your own superpower. Um, and a big hello to Debbie from Duluth, Liliana from Miami, Elise, um, and Jennifer Shaw. Welcome to all of you. I want to zero in on what is, you know, anything but normal, the times we're living in, Kelly, right? Are there things we should be doing from a networking perspective during COVID-19 that are different? From my perspective, my Build Your Dream Network perspective, not really. <laughs> Some of the things I have been uh, sort of beating the drum on for years, uh, uh, people are sort of finally tuning into that in the sense that this digital networking is not secondary. It is not lesser networking. It is the same equal opportunity to meet and connect with people. Does it replace in real life in-person networking? No. And someday at some point we'll have more freedom and movement there, but this shouldn't be looked at as sort of that other thing. Um, you know, so I would say right now people should be very much leveraging digital tools. You should be using them to listen as much as to pronounce because you can learn a lot about the people you want to connect with by watching and observing. You know, we always talk about what's your best networking skills. It's not your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's your right. ear. It's your ears, right? And how many times have people said, you know, you got two ears and one mouth and use them in that proportion. So this social can give us a lot of, you know, kind of clues on other people and how we can connect more effectively with them. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is, is people are realizing right now how important our networks are. So don't lose sight of that. Just be just, you know, in the future when we have more freedom of movement, right? And don't, um, you know, kind of don't hold on to sort of a legacy view that somehow networking, you know, at a cocktail party or schmoozing at a conference is somehow real networking. And what we're doing right now is, you know, kind of the poor second cousin. That's that's a great reframe, right? Because I think probably all of us have felt supported by somebody when they threw us a like or they commented on our piece or our post. Uh, we felt supported. We felt seen and heard by them right. or connect like we were connecting with them. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you a question that comes from uh, Anissa, and I'm going to put this up for everyone to see. What if you're an introvert? How on earth do you network, she asks. Any tips there, Kelly? Oh, you know this is my favorite question. So Anissa, thank <laughs> you for asking. Uh, first thing I'd said, and I will I will do this because it's sitting back there with Alan the Penguin. Um, uh, so uh, pick up my book because I realized in writing my book that I interviewed a bunch of introverts. And why did I interview these people? Because I thought they were really great network builders. So an introvert, first thing do not change do not think you have to have a like one personality type is better than another at building relationships and building networks because that's key do not confuse working the room and the gift of the gab as being a great networker that's that's great you're terrific socializing think about and start documenting when you are comfortable making connections because it may be that someone's telling you to undertake activities Ah, that don't work for you, right? That work for them, but not for you. So those are some like quick tips right there, but drop the notion that one personality type is better at network building than another personality type. Yes, introverts. I love that. That's great. Don't change. That's such an important, you know, starter thought to all of this. You know, I lately I've been obsessed with this idea of being easy to help, being easy to do business with, you know, making it easy for people, right? And you have this line of advice around be precise when you have an ask of your network. Mm -hmm. and, and I want you to talk to us about that. Why is that like a difference maker in all this? Our networks, and I would have said this 
before COVID, before 2020, um, our digital hyper-connected world, we are stressed. Our attention span is all over this place. The more precise you are in terms of um, what it is you're seeking, and I'm thinking like the difference between reaching out and saying, I'm looking for a job versus I'm applying for a role as a software developer in the financial services, you know, department at, you know, Capital One Bank. And hey, Kelly, I see you've worked with some people at Capital One. Could I talk to you about two different things? The general, I'm looking for a job, can we talk, ask? That fatigues your network because they now have to do the work, ask a lot of questions. So that might be the type of email or communication that when people receive it, they ignore because yeah. it's, it's too much, right? But if you ask a specific question, you're also, when you're formulating that question, you're thinking about who's the best person to answer it. Because you don't need to spray and pray by emailing or, or <laughs> right. posting to everybody in your network. You know, sending two or three smart emails is a heck of a better strategy than sending, you know, 50 emails that say, hey, everyone, can you help me? Can I meet? Can I pick your brain? I'm, I'm looking for a job. Good yeah. luck getting an answer and get, good luck getting a, a really valuable answer. I love it. Right. Nobody's going to come to you and say, like, you know, you were too precise with me about what you wanted. On the other hand, it is frustrating sometimes when someone doesn't tell you why at all they want to meet, right. you know, in advance, right? Because even if you do that, I can be thinking in advance about how to help you, who I know, who works in such and such sector. Right. I can't even do that pre-work, you know, before right. the meeting if I don't know what you want. That's but, um, awesome advice. I remember yeah. years ago, sorry to interrupt, I remember years ago, uh, I was uh, for a benefit committee for a not-for-profit and someone was wanted me on, on their benefit, you know, kind of gala committee. And I was like, okay. So they were like, how many invitations can we give you? Because, you know, there's like a volume game that they play. Right, right. And I looked and I thought, and I said, send me five. And they were horrified. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to them, I'm telling you, okay, I said, go crazy, send me 10. And they were still horrified. They were hoping I'd send out hundreds. And I said, no, I, at the top of my head, I can think of five people I know who care deeply and passionately about what you do. Mm. And chances are they know more people. So it is much more like beneficial use of my time to get those five people at your event and talk to them and chat with them at your gala, then men, me sent, spending time addressing, you know, 500 envelopes. Oh, yep. For nothing. So qual quality, not quantity, right? And and Tim, I love the question you are asking. I'd love for you to tell us even more about what you want to know. You're saying, what are some good questions to ask? Will you tell us more about the context? You know, is it the informational interview? Is it a certain networking conversation you're thinking of? Because I want to give you some precise um, advice. Like, oh, but it's awesome that Tim asked that question because it gets to no. the crux of, um, you know, when people say, Oh, you need to go out and do more networking. Here's 10 icebreaker questions. Time out. That's impersonal. Mm -hmm. We can smell that from a mile away. It has no relation or context to, it's not customized. It's not personalized. So that's where I'm like, no, 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 no. You got to get yourself out of that outdated, out of date, no longer useful in my humble opinion, networking mindset. You've got to think about, all right, what is it I'm trying to do? Who's the best person to help me? Now, how do they like to be communicated with? Mm -hmm. Oh, so I, I'm thinking of an example recently, a friend got an email from a college student that was, um, you know, here's my resume. If you can think of, you know, if your company's hiring and I'd be happy to meet you for coffee, you know, to chat about my app, you know, my qualifications. And you know that this poor student had been given this advice, just reach out, 
you know, say that you're interested in their company uh, and that you're happy to meet for coffee. Just send out emails like that and you'll get some interviews. It's COVID. Hmm. Who's meeting for coffee? <laughs> <laughs> right. For no reason. With no agenda. Right. Yeah. No one's doing this. So you've got to put yourself in the shoes of the other person and you've got to customize and personalize. It gets back to the quality over the quantity of the communications. Yeah, that's so helpful. Well, we love, you know, story time around here. So I, I wanted to ask you if you had a kind of networking, uh, you know, scenario in your own life that was a standout that taught you a lesson. Ooh, the big one for me, uh, Selena, uh, was back in 2001, 2002, when I wanted to make a career change. And there was a lot of networking I got right back then, but I made a massive mistake. I had been an attorney. I had a terrific network if I wanted to continue to do what I was already doing. I could have gone into an investment bank and done what I was doing. I could have gone in house. I could have gone to another law firm. I had no room to stretch my wings because I did not have, um, I would say a diverse network across, I would say geography and subject matter, different interests. And I had to build an entirely new network. So in terms of a lesson, don't leave your career and your ambitions vulnerable by having a very narrow network. You need a narrow network in terms of subject matter expertise or mm -hmm. getting mentors in your place of work or you know having close friends to give you feedback, but diverse, make sure you've got a diverse network in the, in the fullest sense of it, because that was a massive lesson. And, and after that, it was like, I'm never leaving my career vulnerable like that ever again. I love it. Doing it with purpose, right? How many of us just kind of accept connections or requests or or make those connections without a real purpose and intention? It's kind of easy to do. So I like the idea of being more thoughtful about it. Um, how about little acts of networking? Are there little micro to do's that that add up over time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you hit on the word micro, micro networking. I mean, just... Think about it. We are here chatting right now and someone is likely looking at our LinkedIn profile. So, you know, little acts of networking are, well, have you posted an update? Have you commented on somebody's update? Have you shared information? What's your headshot? What's your email signature line? All those little human touch points over time add up. Showing up regularly, showing up consistently, that doesn't mean daily, that doesn't mean have to mean for hours, but making yourself accessible. You know, we sort of think about networking and the foundation of it is trust. Trust is built over time. So how can you use things you're already doing to build that trust every single day, every single day? I love it. And, and I like the idea, too, of being efficient. Maybe you're already looking at articles daily around your industry, you know, trends. Why not? post those, right? And half right. a sentence comment, you know, it's doubling up on what you're already doing, which I love. Uh, yeah. And we love your comment, Debbie, who's saying purposeful and thoughtful network. I mm -hmm. like that. Act with intention and care deeply. What mm -hmm. a beautiful way to say it. Oh, I love what right. you added. Yeah, yeah. Well, and some of this, like I said, it comes from like this view of like, what are the things you can do daily? My career, when I got out of law school, started in 1991. We didn't have this. I think I, you know, a telephone, voicemail, maybe <laughs> right. a bomb pilot, right? So there you're a lawyer. You're, you're expected to bill hours. So you're literally chained to your desk. And you were required to build relationships because that's how you advanced in the profession. So how do you do that? when you can't leave your desk. So all of a sudden things like how you greet a client on the phone, how you send over documents, how you share a piece of information with them, all of that starts to become really important as ways to build relationships. So that's why I'm like, use every single tool mm -hmm. deliberately, purposefully, so that you, you know, like that, remembering someone's birthday may be the big kicker 
to, you know, firm up a piece of work than thinking it's, you know, how you have, you know, a fancy, fancy handshake and how you work a room or whether you've got your elevator pitch or 10 icebreaker questions in your back pocket. Well, and I can't help but think it goes back to what you said about being observant. You know, in a case like that, you you get you have a leg up if you're you know? observant about what the person cares about, what they talk to you about when you say, how are you? Or right. how was your weekend? Or, you know, so right. much of it goes back to being observant. Um, and Jeannie commenting, trust is built over time. Yeah, retweet that. I mean, that is a hundred percent. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, I was, I was just going to say, I mean, one of the people featured in my book um, came about, and he's a sales guy. It came about because I called him to buy a URL. And he didn't mm. just say, hey, what's the URL you want to buy? And by the way, how much are you willing to spend? He said, what's it for? Mm. And I talked about my book. And he's like, well, I got a career story for you. And we started chatting. And the next thing I know, I said, is there any way you could get approval from your company to share your story in my book? And then I had to call the publisher and say, there's another case study coming in the book. Right, right. <laughs> Don't print it yet. Don't print it yet. I love it. Uh, but you kind of have to open yourself up to some of that serendipity and you know, you're yeah, yeah back, you're, back to listening and back to knowing, like, even if you're in a sales role, you know, when someone says, Hey, I'm interested in say, wow, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, mm -hmm. you're doing a renovation. What, what are you doing? Like get excited about what someone else is doing. Cause that may open up more possibilities for you. Yeah. Well, Anise is asking a question. Um, she's in transition saying, what if you want to make a career pivot and you don't have such people in your network, like you were talking earlier about, you know, you, you don't, you have more of the same right. people like you. Well, what do you I'm, think I'm, you can do to broaden? Well, first of all, Nisa, like talk to your network about what it is you want to do. Cause you can look at your existing network and they're not in it, but who are their networks? I mean, this is not one of the beautiful things of LinkedIn. They've revealed to mm -hmm. us that each of us has these complex networking networks behind it. It's not just us. So start with who you know, tell them specifically about what you're doing because they might say, oh, my neighbor does that or my cousin or mm -hmm. my other client or the guy down the street, like whoever, right? So, so do that. Then target and focus where is that dream network, that future for your future career, where are they hanging out? And start being part of that. This is where professional organizations come in handy. This is where interest groups, um, uh, you know, maybe it's other conferences. And you start, I mean, you got to start showing up, contributing, being part of those communities so that people are like, hey, what are you doing? Um, you know, can't just show up and say, hey, I want to be part of this. So it does take time. The other thing I did is I, uh, when I was back making my changes, I actually found some other people making the same change. And I used to organize a get together with those people, knowing that, yeah, well, we were all applying for the same jobs. We weren't the decision makers. So we could help each other make that career change. So if you know some other people who are making the similar change, collaborate and, and build that peer support group so you can give each other, you know, not just a pep talk, you can give each other leads that might lead to that next thing. That's awesome. I mean, and it's true that if you think about it, when you do articulate to your network, hey, I'm looking for an HR generalist role, or uh, I'm looking to meet women at the sea level to interview for my book, right? That was the case right. for me. People will come through for you. People generally, when you say, I, I'm interested in doing more of X and it's precise to your point. They generally want to help. They right. want to say, my sister does that. I, I have a book you should read. There's an article you should know about, you know, they want to help, but like no one on earth can help if you're not telling them. So, right. and, and, but it's, but it's a point of like, talk to people about it. Even if you're like, well, they don't know anyone or they're not, not, not that they're not in that industry. It's like, but who do they know? And you plant that seed. So they may not give you the answer right away, but it might be a week later. They're like, oh, I thought about your question. And guess what? This person does that. Or I met someone at yoga and guess what she does? 
Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I let me, can I put her in touch with you? She was excited to meet you. So keep planting those seeds. Even if you think, you know, your barista or your dry cleaner, or your babysitter, <laughs> your neighbor, your personal trainer, whoever you think, ah, oh, they're not going to be able to help ditch that mindset because they might be the linchpin to the introduction you need. So great. Uh, thank you to Anil Kumar for the shout out. He feels like this is really a, a good conversation. So we're happy to have you along. Um, and we see a question here from Emily that I want to uh, share with people. She's recently started looking back into opportunities from a previous career path. How do you stay motivated? This is a neat different angle we haven't talked about to keep putting yourself out there. Uh, I did a wonderful podcast interview uh, with uh, New York, um, uh, the New Yorker cartoonist Liza Donnelly, where rejection has been a weekly part of her career since she started being a cartoonist. Uh, and, you know, the big thing she said was have other interests. So, yeah, you're focused on a career change, but and a career pivot, but make sure you got other things going on in your life and have people around you who are going to support you. Those were two massive takeaways that I had from that conversation with Liza, but literally like every, and, and um, easy to find it's how to deal with rejection is the podcast episode with Liza. It's probably about a 15 minute conversation, uh, but her advice was so good. And as I said, she's been dealing with rejection like, weekly for like 30 plus years because <laughs> that's the career she's in <laughs> <laughs> right learn from those who know right uh, she knows what she's talking about with it let me ask you this kelly is there something around networking you would want to reframe for people or rethink reframe what it is um stop thinking about it as something you only do when you need a job or you need to land some sales uh, and then you can put it away until the next time that happens. Networking is every single human interaction and it is something you're already doing every day. So just do it with more intention and purpose. So ditch that old, you know, that old notion of what it is and start thinking about, all right, every text, every tweet, every update, just, your LinkedIn profile at is it is sitting on the platform right now. That is networking. You're networking when you're sleeping because people are looking you up, Googling you, <laughs> someone's recommending you. So be, be intentional, be kind, be considerate with everything you do because that will pay bigger dividends than, you know, walking into that cocktail party and hoping a magical stranger is going to deliver up your biggest career dreams and wishes. I love that. I, I've heard you say that, and it's so powerful. It stopped me in my tracks hearing you say, right now, somebody is Googling you. Right now, somebody is referring your skills. You know, right now, someone's talking you up to another person. And I thought, wow. And you said, is that presence that you're putting out there online, you know, is it what you want it to be? Is it what you want it to be? Is it detracting from who you really are? Or is it really amplifying and right. showcasing? And so I want to say thank you so much. This has been such a full little power <laughs> half hour, full of your nuggets. Um, you know, relationships can be really hard to navigate, especially right now. And you're making it more human simpler, you know, easier for all of us to access. So thank you so much, Kelly, for your great work. I hope you all will follow Kelly and check her out. You know, uh, you're going to see links in the show notes to her website where you can learn more about her, her podcast, her book. You'll also see uh, how to connect to her on social channels and you should follow her, her here on LinkedIn if you're not already grab a copy of her book, Build Your Dream Network. It's behind me on my shelf, if you can see that. I love it. It's dog-eared and <laughs> highlighted. And I hope you'll stay in touch with me too. You can um, uh, take my courses on LinkedIn to really learn how to make your leadership presence felt. Join my newsletter tribe and please follow me here on LinkedIn and on Twitter if you're not. Again, Kelly, thank you. 
to our awesome community. You really brought it today. Thank you for your great questions. I hope all of you will stay healthy, uh, stay well, and lead on. <laughs>